Hello community, so great that you are back. You know, in my last video we were talking about recent topologies like chain of sort or tree of sort or graph of sort. And the moment I finished here my last video where I showed you how to calculate here specific topological variance here for the graph of sort, I was informed that there is a new topology for the reasoning and it is called SOT. And I thought, hey, that's interesting. And the first thing I saw was this graph. So we have here on the x-axis the output tokens, so the number of tokens, and here the accuracy of the system. So you see, we have now a move. So we move from 200 tokens down to 50 tokens of the system. But we see, if we look at the accuracy, it is almost a horizontal line. So we lose a little bit of the performance, but we can reduce the number of tokens significantly. And this is true for 7b, for a 14b, and for 32b billion free trainable parameter LLM. So let's have a closer look. What does SOT stand for? Sketch of sort. So our colleagues here in South Korea introduce a new AI research paper, a new prompting framework, where they say we now apply three specialized reasoning paradigms that are grounded in cognitive science principles. And they say we develop here to, for the system to work here a new, we train here a new language model that dynamically juices here the optimal reasoning paradigm for each query. So we are here now in inference and we have three specialized reasoning paradigms. And this made me interested and said, hey, I have to have a look at this particular study. What is the latest that they examined? They continue that grounded in cognitive science. Now, I know that you might say, hey, the real science is only now man-built machines, mathematics and physics. But okay, let's say cognitive science is also a science. They mirror how the humans streamline the reasoning process. And the first one they say is a conceptual chaining. So this draws on our associative memory networks to connect our ideas with a minimal verbalization. I will give you an example in a second. The second they called junked symbolism. This is easy, no? We know this. We have mathematical reasoning applied to our normal natural language, and we have a mathematical logic notation that we can write down symbolic representations. This is beautiful. And then, if you went to your medical doctors, you know, experts. Experts have a particular shorthand. If you get some instruction or some transfer to another hospital, they just they don't write down here complete beautiful essays with some long sentences, but they have some keywords in a particular sequence. And this expert shorthand is exactly what they try to learn an LLM to come up with the same reasoning performance. So as you know, we need a little spark of genius here for our video. So the chain of thought, you are familiar with this, and the sketch of thought, it is rather similar, no? We just have now a router model. We have here an AI intelligence that says, if I get here a new query by the user and I have three different reasoning paradigms, I have now to train here the LLM so that the query will be assigned to one of those three reasoning paradigms. And then we just go on. And as you can see here in a mathematical notation, it is rather easy because our LLMs are trained on the verbal instruction and on mathematical instructions. Let me give an example. And yeah, let's start with mathematical reasoning with symbolic representation of our human language. You see this in my last video where I showed you QWQ, the long chain of sort stability test. And at the end of this video, I showed you here Gemini flash syncing. And it was a task, my elevator task. And then the model itself decided, because I activated the code execution, to redefine my rules now as mathematical functions. And it was arguing about this, how to do this, how to plan this. And then it wrote here the Python code exactly with the mathematical function, the same content as I instructed them. So we went from a human task description to a mathematical logic notation. And you know, mathematic is code. And then this mathematical logic was coded in Python. Also, another video here, the video was called the AI reasoning line, where I showed you here, if you have premises that are formulated in our natural human English, 
then we have here, and I showed you exactly how to do this here, first order logics. And as if you know a little bit about mathematics and about logic, you understand here this particular notation. Expert shorthand is something that is inherent with some risks, no? Because you know what? This is it. This The thumbnail of this video is kind of an expert notation. No? You have to know EI a little bit to understand that COT stands for chain of thought. This stands for tree of thought and this stands for graph of thought. And you, you, know the, you should know the concepts behind each of these technical terms. So this expert notation or this expert shorthand, you need a lot of domain knowledge. And then the third one is conceptual chaining. So chaining, we immediately understand this is a logical, probably a one-dimensional linear chain where we just connect ideas. Now, if I have here my body of knowledge, beautiful, and then I have some associative memory networks and I have my ideas. Now I have idea A, B, C, and D. I just have to have a particular idea and a term because the network integrates this into my body of knowledge. There is here the full-fledged solution what this idea could be, what are maybe the preconditions for this idea and so on. An example is exactly, again, the thumbnail of this video, because conceptual chaining is also what we call a simple arrow notation. And you see here, I have here the arrow connecting chain of sort to the next complexity, the tree of sort, connecting here with an arrow to the next complexity, a graph of sort. So conceptual chaining and expert notation can go hand in hand and supplement each other. Let's have the core idea. The core idea, let's have here now the official documentation by this publication here by our colleagues here in South Korea. For conceptual training, as I just showed you, you have a query, you have an answer, or here an assumption between the thinking uh, tags, start of thinking, end of thinking, and you have Seoul error, South Korea error one. So the answer is the Korean one. If you go with chunked symbolism, this is a simple mathematical example where you apply your physics. So you see mathematics, physics, chemistry, material science, wherever you are. But you notice what we have on preconditions that we have inherently an understanding of. A car accelerating, so you understand this is something that is happening, for example, here in the gravitational field of the planet Earth. So we know exactly what our constant g is, what we have to put into this. If we would have this experiment on Mars or the moon of, of Saturn, I don't know, you know, these are all things that we assume to be true. Now, we do have here the exact velocity, so we know we are non in a velocity interval that is close to the speed of light, so we don't have to go with Albert Einstein's equation here. But, you know, there are a lot of other inherent ideas where we just say, yeah, we're familiar with this. No, this is what we experience every day. So, careful. Chunked symbolism can have some inherent risk that maybe you're aware of, or maybe the author is aware of, or maybe even not aware of at all. And the third one is kind of related, no? Because for an expert lexicon, for an expert notation, you also have to be an uh, expert in your field. But maybe in the hospital A, they have a different process in their medical routine. And in a hospital B, for whatever reasons, they do have another linear chain of processing. So careful, this can be here a local, let's say, expert system that is different to some other local systems. So you understand, careful, we have here an undefined degree of freedom within our notations. Let's come here to the fact. Let me show you here the beautiful March 7, 2025 from our colleagues here in Korea, South Korea and Deep Auto. We have here Sketch of Sort, Efficient LLM Reasoning with Adaptive Cognitive Inspired Sketching. This is the graph that I showed you at the beginning. This catched my attention, caught my attention. And I told you what is the content. Now there's only one thing left to do. How do we do this? How the authors did this? Now, they went to Hugging Face, took 15 reasoning data sets, and they built six categories of the data sets. Mathematics, 
common sense, logic, multi-hop reasoning, scientific, yeah, 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 and specialized medical task. Plus, they wanted to see this on multilingual and multimodal datasets. So first task, as I showed you, that we have a router. The router, the task is easy. Our three reasoning paradigms, the router will be trained to understand if we come and have an incoming query, where to route this particular query to. So they took about 14,200 samples from the data set and then they simply used GPT for Omni and they said, hey, little GPT, tell me if for each data sample, which reasoning paradigm is the most perfect reasoning paradigm, conceptual chaining, junk symbolism, or expert lexicons. And then when they had the training data with the solution by GPT-4, they said, okay, now what is the, if you want, the smallest um, model that we have? And they did not went with BERT, <laughs> they even went with a lighter BERT. It's called distilled BERT. We know this for several years now. And they say, hey, this is so light, this is so fast to calculate. So let's choose this language model now to train this corpus to classify each query into the appropriate reasoning paradigm. We have three reasoning paradigms, one, two, three. So we learned here an AI model to do here the, if you want, association. If you are not familiar with BERT, never mind, you know the complete transformer network, we have an encoding and a decoding path. The encoding path is called BERT and the decoding path you know as GPT. Now, let's have a look at the complete process, the flow of the system. So a user, that's me, submits now a query. Let's say I have a mathematical problem. Our distill BERT, our trained language model, now analyzes my query, my feature, the presence of symbols, the technical jargon that I use, and selects now here, let's say, the junk symbolism paradigm. Because it's mathematic, this is the right association. Now, based on the router's output, a system prompt is now constructed that instructs now the next LLM to apply here a concise symbolic reasoning. And the authors went with a QON 2.532B model. And I show you the system prompt in a second. We have three different system prompts. And then the QON knows exactly what to do, has here the symbolic reasoning, has my mathematical problem. And now the QON 2.532B generates here what we want, a sketched chain of reasoning in a compact form, defining here my specific task, specific variables, performing the calculations with minimal tokens, and so on. So you see, GPT-4, distill BERT, and a QN 2.532b. The author said also, you know what, let us just check for self-consistency. You know what self-consistency is. We have some cases we want to do this, three different reasoning paths are generated, multiple paths are generating, and then we let the AI system itself vote. We have different voting systems, let's go with the easiest one, a majority voting system, to say, hey, of those multiple answers, what do you think AI is the best answer given? Then we have the final answer, and then the results are compared simply against the traditional chain of sort prompting, and we see, is this sketch of sort prompting working at all? Now, you or the authors here decided to go here with smaller models, a 14 billion and a 7 billion model. But of course, you can go with any other 7 billion or 14 billion or 32 billion model that you like. For the multimodal task, they went here with the QN 2.5 Vision Language 7B model for the images. All of this is available. We have an MIT license. We have a beautiful GitHub repo. You see the sketch of sort, uh, the Python files were updated or uh, integrated just nine hours ago. So it's really early here, beautiful. And they give us here the system prompts. And you know what's really particular nice? They give us here the system prompts for our three reasoning paradigms in English, Korean, Italian, and German. Hey, that's so nice. And they tell us how to install this locally and everything and beautiful. And yeah, I just checked it. If you want to see here the German version of the junk symbolism system prompt, this is it. This is really how to do it. And of course, because they compare it to a chain of sort, here you have their chain of sort system prompt. So you see here exactly the comparison. If you want to see this in a more generic way of form, you just go to the annex of the publication on archive. And here you have here the 
conceptual training system prompt with the exemplars, with the um, few short examples given. So here you see exactly how the prompt is structured. Think, end of thinking, shorthand reasoning, box, final, everything is here for you. You can hear the junk symbolism system prompt. And then, of course, the third one was the expert lexicon system prompt with the examples. If you only work or in a different domain and you say, hey, for my particular domain, I don't know, biotechnology or medical or finance or whatever, I need a different way how I want to build this, how I want to give my examples here for my financial, I don't know, stock market calculations. Just insert this here and you can have your own reasoning paradigm that you defined yourself. Beautiful. Yeah, let's come to an end. We just have to look at the performance of the system. And here is now the official uh, end result, if you want, for our reasoning task for the system QN 2.532b. Here you have it. The first line is here, our classical chain of thought. And then we have here the sketch of sort in pink. Plus, as I told you, we want to have a self-consistent. So we have a majority vote. And there's several answers are generated. And then the AI chooses what it thinks is the best answer. So we have here an SC with a chain of sort and an SC with a sketch of sort. You have mathematic, common sense, logical, multi-hop, scientific and specialized. But look at the overall. We are just here in general. So you have here the percentage of the accuracy and a chain of sort is here 80.9 and our sketch of sort is 80.5. You might say, it, okay, so where is the advantage? The advantage is here in the number of tokens. The chain of sword used 227 tokens, while the sketch of sword just used 53 tokens. If you go then with self-consistency, you have 682 tokens by chain of sword compared to 161 token by sketch of sword. Now, how much does the accuracy of this system suffer? And you see here the absolute percentage numbers, but in general you can say here the accuracy goes down about half a percentage point for this particular 32B model. Now, as I told you, a mathematical task, if you do this across the 32B, the 14B and the 7B model, you can say, in general, you have a reduction of about 60% of the number of tokens of these LLMs, and you have about the same accuracy. Interestingly, you can even gain plus 2%. But also you lose a little bit. So let's say uh, maybe you lose a little bit of the accuracy of the system. But you have a 60% reduction in the token count. So this is interesting. But careful, it might not always work. And especially, I think what really works well is a mathematical task. Because we do have mathematical logic and a mathematical notation. If you go in expert shorthand... I say maybe you should train your system a little bit on your particular shorthand notation because I think there could be so many hidden degree of freedoms that you might not even be aware of. If you do the same for the 14B, you have here the performance data. You see here the performance. And then for the 7B model, identical terms. If you go for the multimodal reasoning, and I was interested in this, you see here for the chain of sort and the sketch of sort, the number of tokens significantly reduced, but also now the, percent, the performance here, the accuracy goes down uh, from 86% almost to 82.5%. So here, multimodal, you see, ah, careful because there is something happening. But if you are on a system where you have some massive limitation from your compute infrastructure, Maybe really the sketch of sort is one of the possibilities, especially if you go with mathematic and with mathematical logical notation that we have, or with some reasoning expert system, prologue or whatever. I think this is quite safe to do. And I showed you that Gemini 2.0 thinking is automatically doing it. But you know, this this exports shorthand, I don't know. What do you think? You're saying the system is really able to understand here all the systemic precondition that the system might have been primed on in its training phase, and then the user would guess here all the hidden dimensions. I'm not so sure about this, but it's an interesting approach that we see here to reduce the number of tokens for the reasoning process. If you found this interesting, hey, why not subscribe, and I see you in my next video.